Hello everyone, uh, welcome to a, another episode of 10 for the Chairman. For those of you that don't know, 10 for the Chairman is where I take 10 questions from our generous subscribers and uh, answer them uh, with detail and specificity uh, from the man himself um, as a way of uh, saying thank you for um, supporting uh, the game and also uh, enabling us to do the amount of community feedback we do, which involves this video, involves Wingman's Hangar, involves Jump Point Magazine, and a bunch of the other sort of community and posting and blog stuff that we do. Um, uh, you know, we essentially use the subscriber revenue to increase the information flow to the whole community, not just uh, subscribers. So thank you all for that. And I also want to say thank you uh, to SnugX for sending uh, me this uh, gift of The Blood Knight of Germany, which is a uh, book about Eric Hartmann, who was a top uh, ace of World War II, um, which is pretty cool. I actually thought it may be interesting for you guys uh, to know that um, I'm actually obviously a big fan of uh, military aviation and just generally sort of uh, military um, history. Um, and um, I actually had uh, one of my film projects, actually the project I was going to direct after doing Wing Commander was, uh, it was a story that I, uh, uh, based on sort of real fact, but also had some fictional stuff, so I think of it sort of like Titanic, on the original Blonde Knight of Germany, which was, um, Baron von Richthofen, The Red Knight. So uh, a massive amount, a huge collection of books on everything in World War uh, I aviation side, which was a pretty fascinating uh, time. And um, also where most of modern air combat maneuvering techniques, fights sort of originated from a lot of the stuff that um, you know, he and, and several of his compatriots uh, developed then. And particularly fascinating reading, but it's fun. And you'll obviously, I'm sure, having played Wing Commander, have seen a lot of um, uh, that, World War II stuff, all informed into it. So anyway, I thought that'd be fun, and I also thought it'd be kind of fun to show you that there's a picture here of um, uh, when I was actually, we were scouting for the movie, which we called The American Night, uh, which we were gonna do with Warner Brothers in 2003, but then casting things pushed it back, and then um, Flyboys didn't do very well, so it got put on the back burner, but one day I'll make this movie. Um, but this was we scouted in Romania on locations for battlefields in a 1956 Alouette, and uh, I have to tell you that it took some courage to get up in this thing because uh, I think the helicopter was, I mean, the helicopter was significantly older than I was. Uh, but you know what? It flew really well. Um, anyway, there you go. Um, all right, so on to uh, 10 for the chairman and the questions. So the first question comes from uh, Dagger25, and he asks, command and control and radar scanning detection have both been mentioned as parts of the game. Will a spacecraft like the F- 7C uh, Hornet Tracker be able to relay its gathered info into a command and control ship? And the answer is yes. The, the, the tracker is actually meant to be able to, um, essentially has a much bigger and more powerful uh, radar array and should be able to pump information to say another ship and can receive it. So someone in a tracker, the idea would be they're sort of like uh, command and control for a air group and uh, <coughs> there will definitely be big capital ships that will have even bigger command and control. And you could have a Hornet tracker relay its information to uh, a bigger ship as sort of like eyes and ears further out or possibly in an asteroid field where the visibility isn't very good. Um, and we're actually having a lot of fun on the capital ship um, build and design. I think you guys are going to be pretty blown away uh, when we sort of go into that in detail, uh, which we will do um, in the near future. It's something that the uh, Foundry 42 guys are spearheading uh, for us since there's so much capital ship stuff in um, Squadron 42. Uh, okay, on to the next question. Perry the Cynic asks, what happens when I fly to a banner world? Will it have spaceports I can land at, space stations to dock at, etc.? Will they be alien or do they have the same stores as human worlds? So the answer is yes, um, we definitely will uh, have spaceports. So, you know, there's, we'll have you know, not the entire Banu um, area will be mapped out, although down the road it probably will be, but we'll definitely have Banu worlds you'll visit. Um, you can land at, uh, and they'll probably have some space stations. Uh, and yes, they will be different in architecture. So we're sort of doing, we're designing that on the Jean right now. Uh, we're starting to do on the Banu. You can see the Banu Trader is a very sort of different look and feel than the human ships. Uh, and we'll be showing you some Jean stuff uh, pretty soon. It will be a very different look and feel than the human ships too. And we've got some um, Jean um, uh, architecture and planet stuff that we've sort of been working more on that is very different than human and we quite like it. So uh, we're trying to make each one of the different races have a very sort of distinct feel and personality. So you sort of feel, okay, I'm in human space, I'm in Banu space, I'm in Jean space. Um, so that's a long-winded uh, version of yes. <laughs> um, next question, uh, Dragonfire asks, 
are the class four turrets um, come as manned or are they only remote controlled? Um, okay, so on the turrets, the uh, a class four turret is a bigger um, remotely controlled turret. It is not a manned turret. A class five turret and above are manned turrets. Um, so on a constellation uh, is two class five turrets. On the back of a freelancer, there's a class five turret. A class four turret um, is essentially a, uh, a weapon mount that has um, uh, a bit, either a bigger gun or um, hard points for two smaller guns. So like a uh, good example is the Hornet, the Ball turret is a class four, um, and also the Canard turret is a class four. Um, a class two um, mount is essentially a very small turret that can only fit sort of one smaller gun on. So uh, an example of a class two mount is um, the wing gatlings on the Hornet, for instance. And a class one is a fixed mount for a gun. Uh, so uh, I hope that uh, explains it to a certain extent. Uh, we have actually a bigger sort of setting that goes all the way up to class 10 for including capital ship um, mounts. Uh, and those things include spinal weapons as well as much bigger um, turrets that are sort of for ship to ship and stuff like that. Um, OK, next question. Um, Griesu, G-R-I-S-U, so I probably mispronounced that, um, asks, will I be able to make some credits with a cruise line? Or will the public transportation system make such services obsolete? Yeah, I mean, we're actually looking for ways that people can sort of run their own businesses in the game. So, uh, you know, obviously taking cargo around, um, you know, someone says, hey, take this um, piece of cargo or even take this ship from here to here for me because I want it over on this planet is something to do. And I think that actually uh, we'd like to find a way that people could even transport people around uh, in a way that makes sense. Uh, there will be big cruise liners and stuff, and there'll be a, there's a public transportation system that we've always obviously already sort of um, promised and, and will be in there. But it would be nice to sort of have a version where you know, someone could have a ship and you know, take some people from uh, one planet to another planet. I mean, partly, uh, you know, it would be kind of fun to have someone running a cruise liner and, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, maybe it's a, a bit over there, but it, you know, it'd be like murder on the Orient Express. Maybe people could get up to stuff on the cruise line. It'd be kind of fun. Uh, but yeah, now we're going to try and have roles for people to do all sorts of jobs in it, and one of them would be transporting people. Um, okay, next question. Uh, Azim Maza asks, how can a player who only has two or three hours a week available to play even hope to get a level of enjoyment out of Star Citizen when the competition will be playing 10 to 20 hours a week? So that's a, I, I think that's one of those questions that um, sort of thinks of Star Citizen as being like one play path as one way to win. Uh, and the way I'm designing the game and the way I'm thinking about the game is it isn't like that. And it's, there are just different things you can do. So it sort of really depends on what you want to do and you know, what is your definition of win. Because if you think about the real world, you know, lots of people have different definitions of like what makes them a winner. Is it they've made lots of money? Is it they've helped lots of people? Is it that they're an amazing athlete? Or is they are, you know, a great teacher? Um, you know, there's all these different definitions and they can all be achieved at different levels. Some people achieve things they're happy with or greatness by themselves. Some people do it in a group. Um, and I think that's kind of the model of Star Citizen is that we're allowing um, things for you to do that you can, you know, like I'm, you know, if you just want to play by yourself and not deal with other people, there will be a game experience that will be very much like sort of the old privateer freelancer experience that will feel like that and you won't feel like you're pressured into being in the big group. But if you just want to play with, you know, a small group of your friends and go off and do stuff together, then you'll be able to do that too. Or if you want to play in a really big group or organization and try and sort of take over a part of space or build up a big sort of trading empire, you'll be able to do that. So I think the goal for us is to have lots of different things to do. And of course, you know, like say on some of these bigger things, there'll always be roles for people, you know, like a mining operation, right? Well, you know, there's someone that probably wants to own and build a mining operation, but then there may be people that are just like, hey, I just want to be a miner and earn a buck and I'm there and I work for this corporation and do the mining. And so I think that's a better way to think of it. So it's not so much about two to three hours or 10 to 20 and you're competing against everyone else because it's sort of what you want to do in the game. And I think you should be able to have fun um, with two to three hours, um, even if someone else is playing uh, 10 to 20 hours. It's just you'll be doing kind of different things. You maybe won't be able to do as much stuff, but hey, that's, that's the nature of peace. But I definitely don't think you'll be not having fun only playing for two or three hours. You'll just you know, be doing potentially different stuff or less of it. Um, OK, hope that answers the question. OK, so next question comes from Dream Rider. 
Uh, who asked me, uh, you still have the complete order of battle for the Battle of Austerlitz in glorious 15 millimeter hand painted miniatures? How many men per figure? How many figures per regiment? And did you paint them all yourself? Uh, not really a star citizen question, but um, obviously I can't put the entire order of battle, but yes, these are um, some of the miniatures. The rule set that I was having them built to was um, Empire 3, um, and it's been so long since I've actually played these because uh, I essentially started uh, putting this together after my ill-gotten gains on the very first Wing Commander, which is 24 years ago. And of course, whenever you're making games, you don't actually get to do uh, that much game, as much game playing as you wanted to. But yeah, no, I had a whole, um, in my old Austin house, I had a whole room built up for Bell with a whole bunch of Geohex and all the rest of the stuff. And uh, of course, I was also making games, so I didn't have as much time to paint everything. So most of this was actually um, painted in the UK and then shipped over to the US, although some of it was uh, painted by me. Here is the small Hussar regiment, or a light cavalry French regiment, but uh, we can show you the picture. But that was all done by me, which I think uh, I'm quite, um, quite enjoyed a long time ago, but it's also pretty painstaking. But yeah, so it sort of sits there and one day I will uh, have, uh, uh, hopefully, play the battle again, but I haven't managed to do it for at least 20 years, although I keep all my miniatures around, which is a small little selection here that you can see. On to my next question is uh, from Freelancer117, uh, which asks, will Squadron 42 uh, and Star Citizen have SMAA, which is Enhanced Subpixel Morphological Anti-Aliasing uh, in the CryEngine? Um, so I believe that we pretty much support all the uh, anti-aliasing uh, setups, so SMAA, uh, I think FXMAA, uh, and there's quite a few other ones, um, and I'm sure we'll be sort of supporting any new stuff that comes out as far as that goes. I mean, we've got a pretty big graphics team right now. We have four dedicated graphics engineers, and we're looking to hire another two to three. Um, my goal is actually to have more graphics engineers on Star Citizen than even Crytek has it um, uh, in, in all of Crytek. Uh, I may not achieve that, but um, we're gonna give it a good try. Um, so, uh, yeah, I guess the answer is yes on that one. Um, okay, next uh, question comes from Vi Viper Alpha, who asks, I own an Idris and several Super Hornets. I want to base the Hornets full-time in my Idris. All ships are on the same account. Will there be a way to park and leave fighters in the fighter bay of the Idris? Uh, so the answer is yes. I mean, the Idris is designed um, to have a complement of uh, some ships on it. I think uh, sort of in Squadron 42, we sort of decided that it has an active complement of two ships. So in the military, it's two Hornets, and then it has a uh, sort of backup spare Hornet in case one gets destroyed or all the rest of the stuff. And that's sort of the standard complement on a sort of uh, you know a military patrol setup. Uh, so if you have, uh, say, two Hornets, um, you definitely will be able to have them in your Idris. Um, it's almost, think of it like, um, Big ships have their inventories, and smaller ships have inventories, rooms have inventories, and so you essentially move um, your uh, Hornet from the inventory in your hangar to the inventory in your Idris, which is basically the, the, the hangar there. So yes, you will be able to do that, so um, you know, you'll be well armed, um, and uh, you should be able to hire either NPCs to fly it, or um, more preferably, because um, something like an Idris is um, really not designed to be a solo uh, vehicle. You and your friends um, can have fun. And we're doing some, as I mentioned a little earlier in the, uh, in the show, uh, talking about sort of the uh, Hornet tracker and command and control ships. We're really doing some stuff on the bigger ships, the capital ships that I'm super excited by uh, that's really gonna push it. I mean, it's gonna be like almost a whole game in itself running these big ships. And uh, so I think you guys are really gonna like that. Next question comes from Slack R. Um, Slacker, see, I see what you did there. Uh, who asks, when are the Christmas decorations coming down? Uh, yeah, I know, we've uh, been pretty tardy on getting these Christmas decorations down because it's February right now. I believe we're planning to do a um, hangar update in the next week or so, and one of the, it's a house cleaning update, and one of the things in the update will be bringing the Christmas uh, decorations down. Uh, so very soon will be the answer there. All right, very final last question here um, is uh, from exotic.tofu who asks, I see when the plan will be to have things added and updated over time. Does this include graphic updates as well? Um, yes, I mean, the, yes, obviously. So, you know, the long-term plan is Star Citizen is never going to really stop being developed. It's never gonna stop having content added to it. It's never gonna stop having functionality added to it. So the way I look at it is, I mean, even just now, you know, everyone having the hangar last year, you know, we're gonna have the dogfight 
uh, you know, in the near future here. Um, and that sort of even like the early versions of adding the functionality and content. But so, you know, kind of like our, our sort of projected path is, okay, we'll do the dogfight, uh, the base dogfight, which is you'll be able to fly around in sort of single-seater fighter style stuff. And then uh, we'll have another update that will bring in the multi-crewed ships, the bigger ships. Uh, and then we'll probably have some kind of update that will involve some first-person combat stuff. And then we'll have some update that will involve bringing all that together and then sort of data involving the planet side. And so we're just sort of building the game over the time. And we won't change that philosophy even after the game is finished. Like, you know, you can go around the full persistent universe with the initial um, set of planets because we'll be adding uh, new content and new functionality. And we'll also uh, be continually sort of r and new stuff. So, you know, ultimately long term, I'd love to be able to have a way to go seem, you know, like essentially seamlessly down onto the planets, maybe have some more procedural generation, have a way to sort of build out stuff. And that's all stuff that we're actually uh, doing R&D on now, um, not for the initial release, but just to get it sort of a process, evaluate what the issues are. And we're allowed to do that because you guys have been so generous in, in backing us that um, you know, we have funds to sort of do some long-term research and development stuff. And the goal is that, yeah, we aren't going to uh, you know, stand through just the same way. Like if you look at the Hornet now and you look at the Hornet when I did my original um, presentation in the tech demo. It's you know the Hornet's got much more detail because we're always constantly refining and updating stuff, and that will that will not stop once we're live. The goal is to make this the most sort of lived-in, immersive, detailed universe possible. And uh, obviously, we're not going to get it all for you know the first time the Pizzle universe is active for everyone. And so that'll just take time afterwards. And some of the features that even you know we've gotten on some of the stretch goals or some of the content. You know, won't drop right at the very beginning because it's just taking a lot of time to do all this stuff, but it will always go in. So hopefully you'll you'll feel uh, you know things are always moving forward and there's new stuff coming in. And especially as we sort of are scaling the team, which we're still doing, we'll able that will all sort of snowball. So this year you're definitely going to see a lot more stuff than you saw last year, and I think then you know after that it'll be even more so. So uh, hopefully that answered your question. Um, thank you all for listening. I hope you found the ten for the uh, chairman interesting this week and enjoyed looking at my little miniatures and hearing about Rick Tofen and uh, again thank you to SnugX for the book on uh, the Blonde Knight Germany um, and thank you to all subscribers out there for um, helping uh, us improve and be able to afford a higher level of sort of community uh, feedback and content um, and I will see you next week thank you very much <laughs>